In this age of President Trump and intensely polarizing politics, we often need some comedic relief to help lighten things up and also see things from a different perspective. Enter Stephen Colbert, whose mastery of the art of making us laugh about heavy matters has pole vaulted him to the top of late night TV. Satire takes serious work, so how does his show keep up with this ever-changing news cycle? I went to visit him today in the Ed Sullivan Theater in New York City for a very long, about an hour-long conversation. Uh, we're going to play part of it tonight and most of it tomorrow. We started out talking about the debate around immigration, and one of the administration's spokesmen, Ken Cuccinelli, who in two interviews yesterday tweaked the Statue of Liberty poem to make the case for limiting immigration to essentially those who are well off. At one point, he said, quote, give me your tired and your poor who can stand on their own two feet and who will not become a public charge. Then in another interview with my colleague Aaron Bernat, he claimed the poem referred to, quote, people coming from Europe. That's where my conversation with Stephen started. Ken Cuccinelli. The, oh, my God. I blame you for Ken Cuccinelli. He was on CNN. A lot. Yes, I know. A lot. I, know. I didn't watch much when he was yeah. on. Because yes. there's a certain, I love your show, I, you know, every yeah. night I come home, my wife and I have a, like a glass of wine, handful of nuts, watch little Anderson go to bed. That's it. That's how I end my day. <laughs> a handful of nuts? A handful of nuts, just okay. a little bit. Sure. You know, I got to stay in the suit. Okay. I can't come home okay. and binge out. Right. And uh, there are there are a few panelists that I just, I, I can't, yes. I, I got to skip over. I got to I got to skip over some of the, Cuccinelli would be one of them. What's amazing to me about. Was there anything you ever asked him that you thought, I'm going to get an honest answer? Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get something that Santorum wouldn't say. His, his answers, or are, that Jack Kingston wouldn't say. His answers are very thought out in terms of the grammatical structure of them, and can be confusing, which I think is part of the strategy. Okay. If any other pr person in an administration, in a prior administration, had rewritten the words of Emma Lazarus's poem, yes. which presidents from time immemorial yes. have quoted with great reverence. It would be an outrage. It would be, people's heads would explode, understandably, because yes. it is a fundamental bedrock uh, uh, marker of who we are. Yes. There's our physical constitution, and then there's our physical bill of rights, and certainly there's, like, there's the physical declaration of independence, but there's also this emotional constitution that America has. There's an emotional reality that we all share that makes us all Americans, and one of them is things like the, the New Colossus, the poem right. that Emma Lazarus wrote on the, on the Statue of Liberty. And I mean, she, we're I, constantly being told by this administration, you don't see what you see, you don't hear what you hear, now they're saying you don't feel what you feel. You don't actually feel that. And you and don't actually believe that this is a nation of immigrants. You called President Trump, uh, uh, I think, a heretic of to reality. reality. To reality. Her heretic to reality. You know, as, as, a, as, a, as a raised a Catholic, um, you know, the, uh, the greatest sin is, is actually heresy. Because not only do you, um, are not, not only are you astray from the right path, you're inviting, you're encouraging other people to come with you on that path. The specifically, heresy is like proselytizing for the devil. And the punishment for heretics is sort of the most extreme. I think it's heresy. red hot iron coffins in Dante's Inferno. Mm -hmm. yeah, the area, I think it's called Dis. I think that's the part of the level of hell that they're in. So it's pretty bad. And um, <laughs> doesn't get much worse than no, the red no, no, hot no. iron coffin. Yeah, yeah, the worst spa treatment. Yeah. And um, he, our president, wants to live in a fantasy world where only the way he perceives the world is, is the way it is, the only things that sort of serve his vision. And he's also trying to convince us that that is the only world that exists. It's extremely solipsistic. But he's also trying to invite us into this madness that he has. And that is, that's heresy against reality. That is um, proselytizing for the most selfish and the basis instincts that the American people, like all people, have but he is not appealing to the better angels of our nature. Uh, I've heard you say that the thesis uh, of your show has become essentially, hey, you're not crazy. Right. Right. That's, that's the thesis. The audience is not crazy. How you feel is actually how you feel. How you think is actually how you think. What you see is actually happening. What you hear is actually what he said. Even though you're in comedy, though, you are still in the, doing the same pace that we are in news. In right. Fact, we, do five, we do five nights a week, right. an hour a night, which is what and, you do, And right? you, whatever, you know, in comedy, you normally people spend all day or in some cases, if they only have one show a week, all week, writing the material and thinking it and honing it, you have to change stuff 
15 minutes before air, five minutes before air. Right. We have an idea of what the show is going to be, you know, in the morning after we do the pitch meeting, actually in this room. We have a, some sense of, like, what the things that people are talking about because we, we want to talk about what people are talking mm-hmm. about. I'm not here to educate the audience. I'm here to, like, give us our opinion. It's like a, it's like a, a long editorial is what it is. And... Um, but that can all be thrown out the window, even though we have a, have a plan starting at like 10.30 in the morning. We have a general plan. Right. Many's the time, as, as you know, yes. and it's only accelerating. Right. It also feels at like... At 4.30. Yes. And why go on at 5.30? Right. 4.40, 4.45, 5 o'clock. 5 Someone o'clock. might pop in their head and go yeah. like, uh, chopper talk. Chopper He's, talk? Chopper talk. The president is standing in front of Marine One. We call it chopper oh, talk. I got it. Okay. You know, yes. he should just stand in front of like a margarita maker because uh-huh. it's just the same noise. Well, uh, yeah. And at least I, there'll yes. be a cocktail at the end of it. The pace of it, I do think. I mean, I think about the people who work in the White House. I think, I think President Trump. Uh, you know, Dorothy Parker said, "Those born to the storm find the calm very boring." And I don't know why he was born to the storm, but. Emotionally, I think that chaos is something he's completely used to. Oh, no, he to creates his own storm. And has lived his whole life in. He creates his right. own storm. He takes a big bucket of seawater, throws it in his own face, and goes, I'm a sea captain. Right, we're going to ride it out, boys. Throw another bucket. Like, he, he wants But, but I, I always think about everybody around him, just how exhausting it must be to, to be in that orbit. Well, I... I mean, yes, they choose to do every it. Person, I mean, like, every person who leaves goes, God, it was crazy in there. Would you want to have Trump on your show again? Mm. The, the, the quick answer would be no, because I, it would be hard for me to be properly respectful of the office, hmm. because I think that he is so disrespectful of the office that it's, it's very hard to perceive him as I would want to perceive a president in terms of their status and the dignity and the representation of the United States. So I think just for safety's sake, it wouldn't be a good idea. That was just part of the interview. As I said, it was, uh, I think, about an hour and 10 minutes that, that we spoke today, and some of it really just stopped me in my tracks. Uh, he's got a lot to say, not just about politics, but very personal stuff and about grief and loss and surviving uh, and being a good human being, uh, which he is.